just set up your solar pump system and you're experiencing low water flow, I'm gonna go over the most common reasons why we see that and how to fix it. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. This video is gonna to apply to any of our solar pumps that use the controller back behind me. That includes our three inch helical, our three inch centrifugal, and our surface pumps called the transfer pump, the T400 and T800. So these are the most common reasons why during initial setup, we're experiencing low flow. The first is super easy to check. That's when we look in our controller, we have the speed dial down below. Now that goes from 10 down to zero. During initial setup and during the bucket test, we wanna make sure that's at 10 for full speed of the motor. That's gonna send the most power from our panels down to our pump. After we do initial testing, that's when we can turn this down. So if you're ever experiencing problems with your system or trying to figure out production rate, let's make sure this is on 10 and it's one of the easiest to check. So if you check your speed dials on 10, then we're gonna to wanna to go look at our solar panels over here. So we're going to wanna make sure they're a nice full sun. Also, we're testing on a nice clear day where we're getting maximum energy production from our solar panels. If you set up your system throughout the day, it might be four o'clock or five o'clock in the evening when you're starting to test it out, there might not be enough sun in order to run it. So you might have to come back the next day in order to do your flow rate testing and to troubleshoot the system. So we've come over the other side so we can see our solar panels. If your speed dial is a 10, then the next most common reasons why we have low water production are related to power generation. So we need to look at our solar panels and just check a couple of things to make sure they're all set up right. So first, we wanna do our testing on a nice, clear, sunny day uh, without clouds in the sky. This is especially important when we do, say, a flow rate test to see if we're getting full flow. If you have overcast skies, if you have clouds, or currently if you're experiencing any wildfires, that can also affect the flow rate. So unfortunately, we're gonna wait for a clear day in order to do our flow rate testing. We also wanna make sure our panels are mounted facing south, nice open, all in the same plane as you see here. So if you're using our solar panel mount, here's our four panel top of pole mount, you're already achieving that. We have all four of our solar panels in the same plane. There's no obstructions on top of them and they're nice, clear, and available for full sun. If you do notice one thing here, we have our corner protectors and we've accidentally left those on. I'll explain why that's a big issue here. So the way we connect these solar panels and cells are all in series. So we connect positive to negative, going all around, snaking up the panel. We connect the next panel in series. And so essentially, by the time we're done, every single solar cell is connected in a chain with every other solar cell. So think about it like a two inch pipe. We have a large two inch pipe and in the middle of that pipe, we put a one inch pipe. That's gonna restrict the flow for the overall entire length of that pipe. Even though the pipe is two inches in the majority of the spot, that single point in the center restricting the flow is going to impact the flow rate through our entire system. The corner protectors act as that one inch restriction point. We're limiting the area that the cells can conduct electricity through them to the visible portion. That in turn is gonna limit the rest of the entire ray, the amount of current that it can push through. So even though it seems like a very small shadow on our solar panels, it's gonna have a magnified impact for the rest of the cells because of the way they're connected all in series here. So we'll remove these corner protectors. So shadows are gonna have a very similar impact to our corner protectors. You see, I put my hand over here. While it's only shadowing a small portion of the ray, it is going to current limit the rest of the ray because the cells are all connected in series. So that means if you have a small fence post or some part of your mounting structure, or even a tree branch that's hanging over, even though it's casting a small shadow, it will have an impact on your water production. So even if you have a little edge there, we're gonna need to get rid of that. So if you have a fence post sticking up, maybe we can lower that fence post. If you have a tree branch hanging over, time to get out the chainsaw, cut that tree back a little bit so we have nice full sun. If you see any shadow at all on your solar cells, that will have an impact on your water production. So let's go over a couple of installations and troubleshooting that we've performed down the field and we'll explain what the issue is with each install and how we can fix it. So let's check out our first set of images. This is a great example of replacing a windmill with a solar well pump. Unfortunately, the customer mounted the panels inside of the structure of the windmill, and that was casting shadows uh, basically throughout the entire day on our array. So he was getting about half the water production he was expecting. Now it turns out half of the water production was exactly what he needed in order to fill up his stock tank. 
so it wasn't a problem. But if he wants to increase that water production, he would basically double his water production if he moved those solar panels out and prevented the structure from shadowing those solar panels throughout the day. Let's check out another one here. This happens fairly common where we set up our solar panels and then build structure around it to prevent cows and other livestock from entering and damaging the equipment. So that's great. We definitely want to put a fence uh, barbed wire or anything else to prevent cattle and any, any other animals from coming in, chewing on the wires, scratching against the panels and damaging. But in this case, they weren't mounted quite high enough and so those big fence posts were casting very large shadows on the array and basically throughout the day he was getting around a quarter to half of the water production he was expecting. In this case, he needed the water production and so he raised up the solar panels a little bit in order to prevent the shadows from occurring. This next one is a little trickier to diagnose. When we first looked at the solar panel mount, it looked like we weren't casting shadows on the solar panels. But when we looked at a, a steeper angle, we actually noticed that the two by four sticking up, it stuck up around an inch and a half over the solar panels, and that was casting a shadow along the entire edge of the solar array. And it happened both at the bottom two panels and the top two panels. Now, it was just a small little strip covering up all those solar cells, but like I said, since they're all in series, that's gonna current limit the rest of the solar array, and it's gonna significantly reduce the water production. In this case, he just had to cut those two by fours down, so at those angles, it wasn't shadowing the bottom of the solar cells. These next two have a little bit more to do with our sun angle and how the solar panels are laid out. So in this case, you can see all the solar panels scattered around on the ground. Now, majority of them were getting full sunlight, but you do notice we have some of the corner protectors left on a few of the panels. And in our upper left here, the solar panel is being shadowed by a solar panel above it. In this case, he wasn't getting any water. We need all the solar panels in the same plane with no shadows on them. So we asked him to go back, do a quick little uh, temporary remount with a couple of two by fours. And as you can see here, with a couple of boards, he was able to lay out the panels. Now, he still had one corner protector uh, in the upper left and so he had to remove that, and then he got full production flow out of his solar pump by just quickly reconfiguring the panels. He just left them like this. He wanted to test the system before he built up a permanent mount for him. Uh, this final example we can see, it's a very steep sun angle. And so based on your latitude, we have in our user manual and online tools in order to determine the tilt angle for your solar panels, whether you want to maximize production in winter or in summer, or just a good year-round average. This is a very steep angle, so he's getting water in winter, but not very much water in summer. And so we had him tilt those panels back a little bit to achieve his year-round average, and he significantly increased his water production. So those are some of the things we've seen in the fields and the ways we can improve the mounting in order to prevent lower water production. The key takeaway is we want our panels facing south at the proper tilt angle and no shadows on them. If you're saying, oh, that's just a small shadow on there, it is gonna have an effect on your water production no matter how small it is. So if you need to get out the chainsaw or if you need to cut off some fence posts, remove a branch, let's do that so we have nice, clear sunlight on our solar panels to maximize our water production. The other aspect of our solar panels causing low water production is the amount of sunlight we're getting to them. So what's very common is throughout the day, you're setting up the solar pump, you're setting up your solar panels, and come evening, you're ready to do your system testing. Now it's okay to test the system at evening. You might get water or you might get uh, no water or reduced flow. Um, and if you're getting reduced flow or no water, then you're probably gonna need to come back in the morning, wait till you have a nice sunny morning and start doing your testing. The other thing that can affect water production are clouds, overcast days, and if you have any wildfires nearby, the smoke in the air can also reduce water production. So you might just have to live with the lower water production until either the sky clears up or the clouds pass. And then when it's nice, bright, and sunny, you can do your gallon per minute testing. So the next one applies only to our centrifugal pump or our surface pump. It does not apply to our helical pump. And that is the pump could be running backwards. So if you're getting any water with your helical pump, you know it's running the right direction. In the case of the centrifugal pump, if the pump is running in the wrong direction, you're gonna get about one quarter of your water production. So with a centrifugal pump, it's really easy to check and see if it's running in the correct direction. We're going to reverse pump wires one and two. And so we're gonna swap those two wires and that's going to reverse the direction that the motor is running. Don't do this if you have a helical pump and are getting any water because we know it's running the right direction. And if you reverse those pump wires, you can unscrew the helical mechanism. 
with this centrifugal pump, we can unscrew it. So we can easily swap pump wires one and two. That will reverse the direction of the motor and then check and see if you're getting more water. It should be very dramatic. It's gonna be about a quarter of the water production when it's running backwards versus forwards. So try it both ways, figure out where you're getting more water and then leave the wires in that orientation. And that's gonna ensure our centrifugal pumps and our surface pumps are running the correct direction. This next one applies only to our helical pump and doesn't apply to the centrifugal pump. So the helical pump is called positive displacement. It has that worm gear running in a rubber stator. That can wear out over the time. We normally expect it to last five or plus years with nice clean drinking water. But if you have sand, silt, or other debris in your well, it can wear out quicker. So if you've been running your pump, say six months or so, and you start to see a significant decline in water production, it might be time to replace that helical mechanism, especially if you're seeing any fine particles of sand inside your well. The other thing that happens during initial setup is as you're dropping the pump down, if it's a freshly drilled well, or if it's been sitting a while, you can knock debris down and stir up the water and the sediment that's settled on the bottom of the well. And so that can cause an initial failure right away of that pumping mechanism. What we find is customers run it for a little bit, a couple of days or a week, and they'll see that significant reduction in flow, but at the same time, they pumped all that sediment out of their well. So you're going to need to pull the pump replace that pumping mechanism, which we have a lifetime guarantee on, and is one of the only field replaceable helical pumps on the market today. So you don't have to send it in to us. Within a couple of minutes, you can have that replaced. And we find if you're not having continuous sand intrusion in your well, and it's just because it got stirred up, after you've pumped out all that sand and debris, it runs and you don't have to replace it for several years. If you find you have sand intrusion in your well, then that's when you're gonna to need to give us a call and we can go over options for pumps that are less susceptible to degraded wells that either have sand or silt in them. So those are the most common reasons we see for low water production with our solar well pumps. Most of them are easy to diagnose. You can go through this video and check out your system and see if you find any of those are occurring. There are some less common ones. We've seen breaks in the drop pipe. We've also seen kinks in the drop pipe when, the, when we were putting it down the well, there's a kink in it, which was restricting the flow but those don't happen very often. And so if you've gone through all these steps, then you might wanna give us a call. We can give you a couple other pointers of things to check out, some other measurements we can perform to further diagnose the issue. This is Mike with RPS Solar Pumps. I hope this video gets you up and pumping with full flow rates. If it doesn't, like I said, give us a call at 888-637-4493. We're happy to help out and happy to troubleshoot further.